Now, building your own AI models from scratch is difficult. Training models is also quite difficult. And just using ChatGPT uh, or the OpenAI API is quite expensive. So the latest uh, and the best way in the market is to use open source AI models like Llama 2. And you can either use these locally on your own PC or you can use these on the cloud. Now, using them on the cloud is more beneficial because you're not eating up the resources on your system. And in this project that I've built, I'll show you how you can take an open source AI model like Llama 2 and train it or fine tune it on the cloud. So we'll have a sample data set, which is a very small data set. We're using a small data set because uh, we don't want to want to spend too much time fine tuning it. And it's basically uh, in, in the form of a question and a response, wherein uh, we're, we're just asking what does Akhil teach on YouTube and then there are these responses. And we're asking it a question before we fine tune it and then we'll ask a question after we fine tune it. This is where the training is happening. And all we'll do is we'll just go ahead and run the program. This is on Google Colab and I'll share the link of, Google, of this Google Colab uh, notebook on the, in the description of this video. Uh, all you have to do is get your gradient access token and gradient workspace ID. I'll show you how to do that as well. Then you have to simply run this program and you can follow the compilation or the running of this program with this arrow. And um, we've, we've chosen three as the number of epochs. That's basically how much uh, or how many iterations the training will go through. You don't want to have it too, like you don't want to have too many iterations because that will lead to overfitting. And here you can see the generated response before fine tuning. So we asked, it, asked the question, what does Akhil teach on YouTube? And what you get uh, before fine tuning is Akhil teaches various topics on YouTube channel, blah, 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 including all of these uh, topics. But then we have gone through the fine tuning the model iteration one, iteration two, iteration three. As you know, we'll go, three, go through three iterations. And soon we'll get the answer. What's important to note is that we're getting the model uh, from Gradient and I'll show you how to create your access token and workspace ID in Gradient and you can use different AI models from there. So after fine tuning you get Akhil teaches Go, Rust, AI and System Design on YouTube which is exactly what we were training it for. So let me reduce the text and um, shift it here and you can see here that Akhil teaches Go, Rust, AI and System Design. And it added on YouTube on its own, which is a nice touch. So what, what we're do, saying is uh, you can take any open source AI model and fine tune it for your own specific use case, wherein you can start using it in your application. Now you can turn this in your, into an API and um, you can release it to the world and people can start using your project. But this is right now on the market the best way to use uh, to, to, to use these AI models, right? The other way is to you, uh, work with SageMaker and that's the one that I'll show you. That, that you get more, much more control there, you can do much, many more things because with, at least with AWS you get, you can have Lambda functions uh, which, will, which will act as API uh, for, for, you know, uh, you can have like more control on the API side, which I'm sure you can do here, but I'm just more comfortable with uh, SageMaker and AWS and I'll show you everything there on how I can turn uh, a, a basic um, open source AI model into an actual application. So I'll build uh, a video around that as well. So this is uh, what we're building. And now what we'll do is we'll just go through uh, the process on Gradient. So I'll just, I'll just quickly sign out and I'll show you once you log in. All you have to do is, you have to create a workspace. It'll ask you to create a new workspace. Once you've done that, it'll give you the workspace ID. If you go to the workspace, and you let's say you click on fine tuning, which you don't have to click on fine tuning, but I'm just, I'm just showing you something, which is that you need the name of, the exact name of the base model. So you could select Bloom 560M, you could select Llama 2 7B Chat, you could select New Hermes 2 as well. Uh, so I've, I've chosen this one because that's the one I wanted to use, the Llama 2 7B model. Uh, I think they, sh they will be adding Llama 13B as well, uh, which is a much better version of Llama 2. Uh, but the other thing that you want to do is you want to click on, uh, you want to go back. Sorry. 
I'm going to go back and you want to click on account and click on access tokens and here is where you'll create your new access token and once you're done with it uh, once you want to publish this you can revoke all access tokens which is what I'll do after after uh, launching this video okay so now let's go through the program properly in detail now let's go through the code together so we start with installing gradient AI then setting the environment variables for our gradient access token and our gradient workspace ID I've shown you how to get both of these things from gradient AI that you had in installed earlier you will import gradient and with gradient you will first get the base model base model being uh, with the base model slug llama 27 b chat I'd shown you how to get this base model slug also each of those models has a different slug you use the function get base model available to you in the gradient library okay then you uh, create a new model adapter call it test model 3 and you print the ID of that model adapter what's important is the sample query which is what does Akhil teach on YouTube and you print out that sample qu query and the first thing you do is you first before you've done any fine-tuning you want to print out uh, how the AI model responds before any fine tuning tuning so because you want the base parameter like uh, you want you want to compare it with the base of, of how uh, you, you can say you can call it the, the official term is benchmarking so you need like something before training and after training so you can benchmark how effective the training was but without using any advanced um, any AI lingo all I want to say is you want something to compare with after you've trained it after you fine tuned it so <clears throat> you'll say new model data dot complete and uh, what you're saying here is the query is the sample query which you've created here and the generated token count in the sense how long do you want the response to be uh, in our case it's 100 you can say 200 300 whatever you want uh, and you want to generate the output and then you'll print out the output in uh, which is available through the completion variable then we've taken some samples to fine-tune the AI model which has a a key value pair we can call it a key value pair which has is an instruction and a response and the instruction is what does Akhil teach on YouTube the response is the same uh, in uh, in all cases but it doesn't have to be same in all cases because um, because LLMs now are smart enough to discern between different uh, like slightly changing language so it's not a problem uh, but the question the instruction is definitely changing and then this is where we do all the fine tuning so uh, we've selected three as the number of epochs and we'll start with count zero zero to three so we'll run the iteration three times as you saw in the demo as well so we'll first print out fine tuning the model iteration number one because it's zero plus one okay and then we'll uh, just call this function this is the most important function this is where the heart of the program is which is the fine tuning part and you're using sample is equal to samples for fine tuning okay and then you'll just increment the count because then the loop can keep running and after the fine tuning has occurred so that's why you were seeing here fine tuning the model equation one two three after the fine tuning has occurred you will write the same thing which is completion is equal to new model adapter dot complete with the sample query max entry tokens 100 generated output exactly the same line and you'll print the output after fine tuning and what the output looks like now as you can see we've just we, our data set is very small it's just uh, four entries in the data set which is a very 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 small data set uh, for any application but even then even with a, a very small data set you get a very accurate output and that's because LLMs these days especially the ones like Llama 2 uh, 7b 13b they're very advanced and they already have a lot of intelligence built in uh, all you have to do is like find you them a little bit and then you can use them for your own use case this is the best way like I said to create your own little AI SaaS model uh, sorry AI SaaS product which uses which is being powered by an AI model uh, and then you'll just print out like I said the completion response and finally you'll delete that adapter because you don't want to, to exist after that and this is it so that's the little program and uh, this is the first in a series we'll build more complex complex projects we'll use better and bigger data sets and for that we'll 
probably not use Gradient because uh, that can be slightly expensive. Uh, when you sign up with Gradient, you get some free credits. And uh, for the purpose of this particular project that we just did, that's enough. So you don't want to get into uh, more complex uh, technologies. You can just use Gradient fastest and the easiest way to get started with, uh, as you saw, we, we didn't have to code much, right? Everything is being handled by Gradient. If this is the first time you're on my channel, I just want to tell you that there's a lot of awesome stuff around Golang, Rust, and system design on this channel. You can go through these entire playlists. For example, this one, which is 49 killer Golang projects. All projects, uh, they keep increasing in difficulty level. And then you have these 50 Rust projects. I'm not done with those 50 Rust projects. There's only 27 now, but then I keep adding more and more uh, to this playlist. So if, in case you're learning Golang and Rust, these are the uh, most awesome free resources available on the internet as of now because you actually get to build projects and not just learn a programming language. The other thing that I want to tell you about is this Discord community. You'll find the link on my YouTube channel for this community. We discuss a lot of stuff. Uh, this is basically for all the people who follow me on YouTube and we're talking about new technologies, we're talking about um, what we're learning in a day and we're just helping and supporting each other. So in case you are learning Golang and Rust or any other new cutting edge technology, you want to join a community that helps you, this is the place to be. You'll find the link to the community here on my YouTube channel.